was a few years ago and just had so much information and just was so informative that we had to get him back on today because, mm-hmm. you know, it, that's some things are supposed to be jumping off in January in North Carolina with sports betting. He's kind of knows a lot about that. But he's currently the athletic director for UNC Pembroke. And welcome back to the sports shop. Athletic director, Dick Christian. What's up, brother? How you doing? Oh, uh, man. So, so just, just off the dribble, though, and, and if you're watching on uh, – on WRL Sports Plus uh, or WRL Sports Fan, you, you you see this unbelievable huge helmet. It, it, that's somebody's. I mean, that fits. That's a big helmet, man. Yeah. That's a, that's a real live helmet. Technology's changing, you know. They got a lot, <laughs> lot more. You wear like a car on top. Of your, you wear like a car on top of your head almost. But uh, they, tell us what we're looking at right here. That's that's interesting. A helmet right here in the studio. Yeah, Morgan Sheehan from our communications group came with me today. And she hey, brought, Morgan. How you doing? Good morning, Morgan. <laughs> she, she brought our uh, Lumbee Tribe partnership. We wore on American Indian Heritage Day this past weekend. We were we were very proud. Uh, got featured on Sports Center Gear Up I this saw weekend. that. So if you saw that feature, uh, it was just great publicity for that that partnership. And we had uh, tribes from all over North Carolina represented. Uh, we set a scoring record. We uh had a, had a really good day, so it was, it was so. So there's, they was at the game. Everybody was all pumped up, and so we uh, had native dancers before the game. Really, mm-hmm. uh, we had uh, a lot of some of our student athletes are Lumbee tribal members. Oh, okay, so we had them featured in a lot of the pregame and a lot of the the video lead up. And then when the team came out with that helmet on, you know, our our fan base went crazy. So 68 points, that's a that's a school record. Wow. For us. Wow. That's great. That so was a great way to finish the season for sure. Wow, congratulations with that's that. Awesome. That's awesome. We are talking to uh athletic director Dick Christie with UNC Pembroke. Well, that's a good segue to my question because it speaks to the growth of the program and so this is your 11th year is that correct 11 seasons yeah I spent so 13 years tell us NC what State excites that. you the most and, and tell, mm. describe the growth from day one to now uh it's it's hard to put into words but uh we've been very fortunate you know i think last time i was on the show we yeah. were actually recovering from the hurricane that's exactly you know, right some and of the things that, that's uh, right that's right that the program did just to help the area get past that and um now it's kind of a similar transition coming off of covid so coming back from that and and trying to reestablish ourselves financially uh, has been has been big. But our teams right now, we you know we won seven conference championships last year and won our our conference excellence award. So it's been it's been a lot of fun to watch. I think our biggest thing is continuity. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a lot of coaches that have been there a long time. Mm-hmm. They they know the landscape. They know the type of student that will enjoy mm. uh, Pembroke, North Carolina, and, and Robinson County. Mm-hmm. And it's it's paid dividends for us. So uh, we we're three championships in this year, and wow. uh, hopefully keep keep that rolling. Man, uh, shout out to you, by the way. That I mean, is I mean, awesome. I mean, yeah, last time you see it, you was telling some things <laughs> that was impressive. Now now you just kind of took it up a whole other level, man. Uh, uh, Dick Christie, who is director of athletics for UNC Pembroke, is rocking with us today, and that's so many things I want to talk to you about. One of it in particular is let's get into this House Bill 347, mm-hmm. which is yeah. uh, sports betting. And, and you know, they, they moved it out because they had made an announcement last week that, uh, but we got to hold up because we're not ready yet. <laughs> like, we got we got we got your money, bro. Yeah, hey, we, 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 we got to get our facilities, you know, these all these things ready for it. We don't, we don't know what we're doing yet, but we got to get it together. So hold back. How how would something like this, how does something like this affect a school like the size of, of, of UNC Pembroke? It's a game changer. Um, Talk to me a- about that. Absolute game changer uh-huh. for us. You know, we, we really, uh, it's not dramatic to say we were really on a precipice in small school athletics, particularly in the UNC system. Okay. Historically, it was funded through student fees, right? So, so if mm-hmm. you're a normal student, you walk to class, you live on campus or live near campus, you eat in the dining hall, those type of students will pay an athletic fee, and that predominantly supports the athletic program. Wow. So okay. For, for schools like us and North Carolina Central. Yes. And Asheville. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's yes. that's the lion's share of your your revenue with which to run the program. Mm-hmm. But since COVID, now the students are diversifying their education, mm. taking more classes and programs online. Okay. Those students do not pay an athletic fee, or they pay a, a prorated amount. Wow. So it's been a significant impact to the revenue streams. Then when you couple inflation and everything else on that. Uh, you know, it was really the end of the line for a lot, of, a lot of programs. So I, I give our legislature a ton of credit, mm-hmm. in, uh, just seeing that and, and aligning that need with our board of governors. Uh, went through a two-year process looking at economic impact of the entire athletic programs in the system, and they mm-hmm. saw, you know, this is a big deal for the state. So to get this revenue stream, I know it's hard to believe, but even if it hits some of the projections, yes. you know, if we can get, How, what kind of projections we talk about in terms of 
uh, ultimately they they think it could be north of a million dollars. Yes. But you know, if it's a million dollars, let's yeah. say, that's actually less revenue than than we <clears throat> we've lost in a four year span on on fee forecast. Wow. So it it is a much needed shot in the arm. It'll Can help you? Us I mean, too. I mean, that's like you got a lot of that right there every, every right. year. You influx of money into somebody like your program or North Carolina Central or like you said, UNC Asheville and Fayetteville State, whatever. That's a big deal, man. Yeah, we're going to be tackling obviously you know our deficit sure. first and foremost. Right. But for some of these Division One schools, um, oh yes. you know, the transformation committee in August they approved a lot of changes to required mental health required insurance you know two years after your participation now they have to carry insurance for those student athletes mm. so uh, for some of our d1 counterparts that money spent before they even get it yeah with, mm-hmm. with new requirements just to stay division wow one. wow yeah. see those are the things that we don't know but people at <laughs> yeah. your level i mean it gets real it gets real touching there's so many things are going on with that yeah. right so we talked about the positive side the economic impact so now i want to ask you do you see any issues with sports betting versus the college athletes there's no question they've got to be remain completely separate. You know that that revenue stream really needs to be the only the only tie. For, fortunately, we've had to deal with this for a long time. Mm-hmm. I mean, everybody looks at the um, the Arizona State point yeah. shaving scandal. Oh yeah, right. when, Oh yeah, um, yes. Since then, I mean, it's met, every year we have an educational process with staff and coaches and student athletes, so that, so they're aware of the dangers and and what uh, certain mm-hmm. bad actors may be looking to try sure. to influence them in certain ways. But sure. uh, I was, it was interesting a couple of weeks ago, I had a chance to be in, in Indianapolis at the NCA office uh-huh. and they uh, brought the enforcement staff in and they have an entire division on tampering mm-hmm. and looking at the new technology now and, and how they monitor IP addresses and how they look at bank. Are you serious? And the, so that's the, how, the digital record they go of where catch the money's that's going. A, that's how they catch them. <laughs> well, they, they, went on, they went on to say all the states that had legalized sports betting sure. and how they've been able to come alongside those those gaming commissions. That's awesome. And actually and gives, uh, improve some and, of their technology. Yeah, give so some of the, I, I this think is in some learned, ways it will attention. help us monitor even more than what we're already doing and, and be able to avoid any of that any of that wow. conflict. So, you know, you look at the lottery and how successful it's been and how many student scholarships have been mm-hmm. provided. Mm-hmm. It, to me, it's the same synergy. I think it's a great thing. And I, I really, a, a lot of credit to the Board of Governors. Oh, wow. Yes, absolutely. That's great. Be okay. careful who you share your computer with. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. We're talking to the athlete yeah, you director. You can't have somebody else place a bet for you. There you go. You can see Pembroke. I did Chris. He's rocking with us right here on the sports shop. Let's keep it on the money line. How does NIL at, at that level, what does is- – what does that mean to a uh, student at, at UNC Pembroke or at that level? Talk to us about that. Uh, it's, uh, I mean, personal feelings. It's yes. A, it's a distraction. Um, okay. You know, I think if you look at some of the data last year, uh, Forbes, I think, put a put a list out and they showed for majority of your Division One and Division Two kids, the average income from NIL is $35 a month. And majority, wait, 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 are you serious? Yeah, if you take not, out not if, in Alabama though. <laughs> if, you, if you take out that upper power five echelon, those right. guys that are getting gotcha. a million bucks. Gotcha. Thir- Thirty-five dollars a month, and and about eighty-eight percent of those opportunities are social influencer opportunities. Mm. So one thing we did at our our welcome back event this year, we actually made that our topic and and sat down and showed them some of this data just to say, look. We're all for you capitalizing on your entrepreneurial mm-hmm. spirit. Mm-hmm. Like if, if the NCAA had done that and you know given the kids their the revenue from their jerseys mm-hmm. back in the day, we probably wouldn't be where we're at now. Right. Uh, but because because they st- towed that amateurism line for so long, we're we're now where we've gone off the cliff with it. Right. Um, but I, as I've told them, if you're going to be a successful social influencer, mm-hmm. the, the some of the data says you got to be three and a half four hours a day cultivating and crafting your brand that's right, right. So, so if you're going to do that in college and make 35 dollars a month See, no. and that takes you an extra semester to graduate no, you no. just blew all your right. all your income right. that's so, right so keeping in perspective you know if they're if they're an entrepreneur at heart a lot of our kids do um art and crafts and, okay. and, and sell apparel and trying to cultivate brands we're all for it um but don't let that be a distraction from what you're there for you know, a college degree is worth a million dollars to you in revenue mm. over your lifetime mm. in, in added income. So keep the keep the main thing the main thing. Wow. We are talking to UNC Pembroke Athletic well, like Director, this, I, I this amazing young man, like Dick Christie. Talk about um, Transfer Portal and how the impact on your team. Transfer Portal, uh, It's there's pros and cons. Um, we, we, <laughs> just had a, we just had a transition in football this past mm-hmm. year, uh, and our coach actually came from in-state. And a lot of his players had a favorable experience, so they it, that we had about twenty players come with him wow. who were impact players for us, and they're immediately eligible, right? So that that's obviously 
the the pro side. Of right, it. You know, right. The con, I think, particularly for coaches, is your job is to to cultivate young men and women, and a lot of that are difficult conversations. And you know that first time that some of these students run into that conflict resolution, there's now no no buffer for them to have to deal with that. Um, the rules actually state they don't have to talk to their coaching staff and go straight to the compliance office and get into the transfer portal if they fill mm-hmm. out an educational module. So to not bring them to a decision point where they have to sit down and say, hey, this isn't working out, mm-hmm. to me that we're not really doing our job and trying to prepare them for, for life. So that that's the downside. Um, as I tell our freshmen in our orientation, to this point in your life, you've probably been the best player or one of the best players on every team you've ever played for. That is not the case right now, and you're going to have to wrestle with that and be willing to work hard enough to become that person that's right. on this team. But as you try and do that in today's generation, that's hard. And uh, the transfer portal in some ways is an easy out to avoid a tough conversation or avoid a tough road uphill. And if you look at the data, I think last year, the year before, there were 13,000 kids that went in the transfer portal. Mm-hmm. Only 40% of them ended up on a scholarship somewhere else. So we, we really try and caution them. We're, we're, you know, you need to be happy. You deserve to have an opportunity. Mm-hmm. But just, just realize, if you mm-hmm. go into the portal, it is not a guarantee you're going to come out on the other end somewhere um, right. that, that you're happy. And, right. And, Dick, also I think it affects a little bit like high school seniors because, you know, coaches are looking at transfer guys coming in that's played a little bit already versus bringing some new guys in. So I know it affects a lot of guys that are season. Some of them reclassify because of that. Talk about that a little bit. I don't have the the data, but just just from observations, mm-hmm. I feel like there's less scholarship aid available to mm-hmm. high school kids now That's than right. maybe there was when I, I was coming up in the '90s. I agree. I because agree. If, if you come in as a high school kid, you have an un, unfettered access to the transfer portal and the one time exception. Mm-hmm. If you come in from the transfer portal, you've lost the one time exception, so mm-hmm. you you're going to have to tough it out. Mm-hmm. So if you're a kid who's been in a college strength program for a year and you come in the transfer portal. Mm-hmm. You're probably a couple pounds heavier. You're probably yep. a little more mm-hmm. experienced. Yeah, yeah. grown man. And, and now you're, right. you have less, <laughs> we talk about that you have all less time. options to leave. Yes, yes. So if I'm a coach now to build a program, well, I got at least three years with this person mm-hmm. where I may not have more than a year or two with, oh, with, with a freshman. And yeah. um, that's tough because cause yeah. when you think of it traditionally, you, yes. you want kids to come as a high school student. Absolutely, absolutely. We're rocking with the athletic director, <laughs> Dick Christie. I mean, we got a plethora of questions. But I, one question that I, I really want to ask you is that, uh, are you tracking to, to in terms of I want to be AD and this is what I want to do and I mean where are you, are you tracking to exactly what, what you want to do at, at this point in time in your career? Oh yeah, I, okay. Um, you know I was fortunate. I did my graduate work at NC State. Yep. I know you're a heels person. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this guy this does, does his homework. homework. <laughs> this guy does his homework. Hey, that, 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 that's that's uh, why he's successful. <laughs> uh, but I spent 13 years there. I was fortunate. Um, you know they took a long time for them to get rid of me and then. Uh, <laughs> I was a Division II student athlete, so as I got closer to the AD's chair and started to realize what I wanted that to look like, mm-hmm. uh, I, I wanted it to be more similar to the experience that I had mm. at, at a smaller school. Nice. So uh, when UNCP opened up, small school in the system looked mm-hmm. a little bit more similar to my experience, so it's been a great fit. I've been really, really fortunate. My wife and I have been yeah. uh, really embraced by the community Good there, for you. so it's a, it's a great yeah. place. Good for you. UNC Good. Paradise, as we call it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I love that, UNC Paradise. I mean, it's so many great things when we look at the successes over the last 11 years and that you're celebrating the 50 years of women's athletics i have to shout that out yeah. um but are, is what what do you want to leave us with that are some real good highlights yes man it's hard, it's hard to it's to so pick, many i was like <laughs> yeah, yeah we don't have that much time i think so you know just give us a couple <laughs> yeah i think uh just just seeing what the teams are doing feeding off of each other uh the you know we our goal now we've got to try and get them past the first rounds of the ncaa tournament we've done mm-hmm. a great job at the conference mm-hmm. level mm-hmm. but now that Warner Brothers is leveraging all of their digital assets with the NCAA and they're mm-hmm. going to actually televise the later rounds of even Division II mm. championships, we have to make it further in regional yeah. play because that's where we can really help UNCP's brand. So for us financially, this is a great step with the sports betting, but it's, mm-hmm. it's not the end. We really need to continue down this yeah. path of diversifying our revenue so that these kids have a chance to so, get on that national stage. So, That's right. so Michael, I'm just I'm saying on live right now. We got to get this guy on more often. Uh, he, we got <laughs> maybe on a monthly basis come in just check in with the AD because he has a plethora of knowledge and and the fact that you know he knew that I went to Alabama A and M and played Alabama A and M. That's so true, dear to my heart. And so, I'm a Tar Heel. And you're a Tar Heel. So he's he's he. 
We got to get back going. Like, I mean, it's been like five years. We didn't talk next week, right? 